give me my freedom now. Please give our freedom to be free. What are these? These are the different ways that people fought against slavery and got rid of it. How did it end? What did they do to stop it? There wasn't a single big event that led to the abolition of slavery. Different things happened. What would you like to look at? Who are you? My name is Mary Prince. I was born into slavery in Bermuda in 1788. I spent years of my life working for my freedom. When I was free, I wrote a book to show people what slavery meant and to encourage other people to fight for the abolition of slavery. How did you feel about what was happening? I felt sad and also very angry, particularly when I heard people say that the slaves don't need to be treated better and don't want to be free. People are wrong when they say that slaves are happy. How can anybody be happy when they're so badly treated, when human beings are treated as animals? All slaves want to be free. To be free is very sweet. I've been a slave myself. I know what slaves felt. How did you get your freedom? I had to fight hard and work hard to get there. When I was a little girl, I was very happy. But the things that happened to me as I got older made me realize that I wanted to be free. The first time I realized how terrible slavery was, was when I and my sisters were sold away from our mother. I was sold for 57 pounds. Each of my two sisters were sold to separate owners. At the end, my mother hugged us and kissed us crying all the time. I had to follow my new owner to his shop. I was 17 years old. My life after that was terrible. The new master and mistress were so fond of the whip. One day, a cow got loose, and for this, I received such a terrible flogging, I ran away to my mother. My mother didn't let me in the house, but she hid me up in the rocks and brought me food at night. In the end, my father made me return. After that, Mary was sold to a new master on Turks Island. Here, escape and revolution were talked about more often because it was close to saint domingue where runaway slaves were welcomed. Why were runaway slaves welcomed there? Because it was an island ruled by former slaves who had rebelled against their masters. It was the first free black country in the Americas. All of the enslaved people knew about it. What's going on there? People had rebelled even on board the ships that brought them from Africa to the Americas. Runaways. Many slaves ran away at one time or another. People just ran away so that they could be with their family on another plantation. Some people ran away to escape punishment.
In Jamaica, whole groups of people ran away into the hills where they set up free villages. They were called Maroons. The British couldn't recapture them. Why not? The thick forest in Jamaica is very similar to the thick forest in Nigeria, where many of the enslaved people had come from. They were much more used to this kind of terrain. It is most difficult even to see the enemy. The men are forced to march up rivers, over steep mountains without any track, through such thick woods that they have to cut every step. Because of this, it is very difficult for us to fight them. Can I speak to a maroon? You can speak to a modern-day maroon. Maroon communities still exist in Jamaica, living on the land they won from the British. This is Colonel Wallace Sterling. So how did you beat the British? They use the tactic of it and disappear. I eat you here and I disappear. It would take about six maroon soldiers to cut down a whole battalion of British regulars. And the maroons, our ancestors, they were very clever at ambush. They would use the, the trees that grows around, the shrubs, vines, and in that way they could cut down a whole battalion and disappear back into the woods again. Each fighter knew their way in and out of the base camp. They didn't make any defined path to their hideaways because if they did, it would be a dead giveaway. In the end, the British had to give in and sign peace treaties giving freedom and land to the former slaves. The success of the Maroons and other rebels inspired people and made them realize that it was possible to win freedom. Was that where Mary got her ideas from? Yes, it could have been. Another reason could have been the fact that she was taken to Antigua. On Antigua, there were a lot of free black people. At the time, they were called free colored people. The sexual abuse suffered by women under slavery meant that many children were born who had white fathers, who were slave owners, and black mothers who were slaves. Because they had a white father, some of them were given a good education or even freedom. By 1800, there were thousands of people known as free colored. This also inspired other black people to fight for their freedom. What's happening here? Christianity also encouraged slaves to think about freedom. Mary Prince was baptized in 1817 in Antigua. Although I carried on working, I was continually ill-treated. I ran away again, but I returned because I didn't know what else I could do. I was taken to Antigua, and it was there that I decided that I'd try to buy my freedom. But you didn't have any money, did you? I managed to make money when my master and mistress went away from home and left me to take care of the place. I took in washing and sold coffee and yam and other provisions to the captains of ships. Sometimes I bought a hog cheap on board ship and sold it for double the money on shore. That was how I gradually made money. Eventually, when I knew I had enough, I asked my mistress if I could buy my freedom. Did she let you? No. She got very angry and called me names and asked me who'd put freedom into my head. She wouldn't agree. And soon after that, I was taken to London to work for her there. But that was a good thing for me. In London, I met some people who helped me. Mary went to London in 1828. There, 
a group of people were trying to get the government to abolish slavery. They became known as the abolitionists. This is Olada Equiano. In 1783, he went to see Granville Sharp, a famous anti-slavery campaigner, to tell him about the captain of a slave ship who'd ordered that 131 people should be thrown overboard and drowned. The case got a lot of publicity and was the beginnings of the abolition movement. Gentlemen, we are met to form a society for the abolition of the slave trade. Former slaves like Equiana and Cuguano published their autobiographies. The abolitionists went round the country giving lectures and talks to get people on their side. The movement got support all over the country. How Scotsman! Endure this, and the treadmill, and the whip. A good weapon never hurt anyone. Aye. Does it not, brother? I have in my hand a Jamaican whip. If I cannot lay your back open with one stroke, I shall give 200 pounds to any charity you name. So that's how slavery ended? No. At first, the abolitionists didn't ask for an end to slavery. They asked for an end to the slave trade, so that it would be illegal for anyone else from Africa to be sold as a slave. I don't understand. If we're against slavery, why didn't they ask for it to be abolished? The only way the law would be changed was through Parliament, and many plantation owners were members of Parliament, or had friends who were. They claimed that Britain would be ruined if slavery was abolished. I acknowledge that the slave trade is not an amiable trade. Neither is the trade of a butcher an amiable trade. And yet a mutton chop is a very good thing. <laughs> the property of the West Indies is at stake. Though you may be generous with your own property, sir, you should not be so with the property of others. It was discussed in Parliament for several years. The nature of this trade is now laid open to us. We can no longer plead ignorance. We cannot evade it. If the abolitionists had asked for full abolition straight away, the planters would have been even more opposed. Abolishing the actual trade was a good first step. In 1807, the law came into force. The slave trade was illegal. So did it work? Did slavery just die out then? No. Smuggling of slaves still carried on, and in some places, the slave population got even bigger. This was because children were born and became slaves automatically. So the abolitionists carried on campaigning, this time for full abolition of slavery. What's this? Look closely. Each figure is a human being. The plan shows how tightly people were packed in for the long voyage. The abolitionists got a lot of publicity and sympathy for their cause by printing thousands of copies of diagrams like this. In London, there were many, many people saying that slavery was wrong and that we should all be freed. I heard that there were even people in the government arguing about it in Parliament. There were people holding meetings and telling everyone how badly we were treated. I was so happy to know that there were so many other people all helping to show how wrong it was to make human beings into slaves. So what happened to you when you arrived? I was getting older and more ill, but I was still expected to work in the same way. 
In the end, I couldn't even stand, and Mrs. Wood, my mistress, forced me to sit or to kneel to finish the task. When I realized things weren't ever going to get any better, I decided to go to the Moravian Church Mission. I'd been baptized by the Moravian missionaries back home, so I knew they might help me. And they did. Even though Mrs. Wood, my mistress, came after me, I knew I wouldn't return. The Woods couldn't make Mary return. Her case was taken up by the Anti-Slavery Society, who encouraged her to write her story and had it published in 1831. One of the hopes behind the abolition of the slave trade was that slave owners would now treat their slaves better, but stories like Mary's showed that that hadn't happened. So do people in the Caribbean know about all this stuff? Gossip and rumours spread very quickly. People heard about what was going on in Britain and the fight continued back in the Caribbean. Doctor, Mr. Manderson. House slaves heard all the latest news. It's been announced in England that you'll give up your slaves and take sides against us. What about it? Well, I hope it won't come to that. You hope? That's no answer. In Jamaica, in the same year Mary's story was published, there was also a revolt known as the Baptist War, led by Sam Sharp. Sam Sharp was hanged for his part in the rebellion. He was a well-respected preacher and black and white Christians were shocked by his death. On the 5th of February, 1832, one week after the death of Sam Sharp, Great Britain appointed a committee to discuss ways of ending slavery. There are several reasons why slavery ended. One of them is that people got freedom because they fought for it in many ways. Individuals like Mary and large groups like the Maroons refused to accept it. Abolitionists in Britain made sure everyone knew how bad it was. Midnight, 31st July, 1838. Slavery is abolished in the British Empire. Should be set free! And that a reasonable compensation within Bible So is that the end of slavery? It was the end of slavery in the British-owned Caribbean. There was still slavery in many parts of the world, in the United States, in Brazil, and in Cuba, where millions of people were still fighting for freedom.